Let's discuss replacing the EGR valve on a Honda 3.5 liter. This example is on a 2001 Honda Odyssey. Now the EGR valve itself is not too difficult to access. We can remove the electrical connector on the top here and then there's two 12 millimeter nuts which can be accessed with an end wrench and we can change out the EGR valve. Now our new EGR valve comes with several updates. It's got improved contacts inside and better corrosion resistance inside the pintle here where carbon typically builds up. This also comes equipped with a gasket so you're ready to bolt the new one on. But a lot of these vehicles have issues in the EGR system that are not related to the valve itself. So we're going to replace the valve but also there's some carbon buildup issues on these particular vehicles that occur inside the intake manifold. And so we've got an updated kit here. And the fix is to go in inside the intake manifold and clean out the carbon buildup. We're going to drill out the passageway and install this stainless steel sleeve to prevent carbon buildup from reoccurring. So what we've got here is a kit with a stepped drill bit, the sleeve, and also a punch to help us install it here. And the kit comes with a throttle body gasket and EGR gasket as well. So. Let's jump in. We're going to remove all the vacuum lines, the air intake boot, the electrical connectors for the TPS sensor, the MAP sensor, the intake air temp sensor, and also for the IAC valve. Then we'll remove several of the bolts here, and we've got a couple vacuum hoses on the back side here. Remove the throttle cables, and we'll have the intake manifold up in no time. I've got all the vacuum lines, uh, a couple coolant lines underneath the throttle body here. So I've pinched those off as well, set one of them aside. Uh, I've removed all the studs and bolts, so everything's loose here. Just got to get the throttle cable out. So we've got a cable for the cruise control in this particular car and one for the actual throttle pedal. So there's a, a lock nut here, and then on the front side there's an additional nut. So we're going to loosen the one on the front side. You'll see that there's a bare spot in this housing. So it, will allow us to get those out of the holder. So don't touch this one here. We're going to use that as a stop so we don't have to readjust it when we're all done here. We'll just move this nut out of the way and work our cable up out of there. Now once that's all set, we can move it over here, line up the cable to the recess spot and we're ready to remove the intake manifold. Now the intake manifold is off the vehicle. You can see that EGR passageway here and it's full of carbon. And so quite often this gets restricted as it goes from here to a passageway into inside the intake. So what we're going to do is remove the throttle body and then we will follow the procedures outlined in the instruction sheet with that drill bit, clean out the passageway here and install our new stainless steel sleeve. Now we've got the intake manifold off the vehicle. Some people may choose to leave the throttle body connected to the vehicle yet. That's why the throttle body gasket is there. In this case, we decided to take it all in one piece. So now we've got to clean some of the carbon out of this hole here. So you might want to take a, a screwdriver to get the hole started. You can see this port was completely plugged here. And so we can work, work it around with a screwdriver here and then we are going to take the drill bit supplied here and gently by hand work it through there and clean a lot of this carbon out just, just by hand. We don't want to hook up the drill yet and get too carried away here and start cleaning this out and drill unnecessarily into different passages. So you can see now I've got the drill bit to fit all the way through. Worked out a lot of that carbon there. And so we, we've cleaned the passageway. Now it's time to hook it up to the drill and do a little bit of drilling here. Now we've put some tape over the intake ports so that the drill chips do not fall in there. We've also coated the drill, the special supplied drill bit with clean motor oil to help guide the drill and also to help catch any pieces. So it's a stepped fit. We're gonna just gently let it go through here. Now that we're done drilling our EGR passageway, it's very important that we've 
cleaned up the manifold itself. Uh, I just took this to the parts washer, ran a bunch of parts washer fluid through it, tried to make sure there is no metal chips or remnants left anywhere. Then finally we took shop air and blew it out, dry it off, make sure that there's nothing left in there. So now we're going to take our pipe insert and our installation tool and you'll notice that there is a swedged end here and so we're going to put the tool in the swedged part and we will insert it into the hole here. So it's gone in pretty straightforward so far. I'm going to take a small ball peen hammer and gently continue to drive it in until it's flush with the hole now. We don't want anything sticking out this way. Now what that's done is provided a, a larger passageway, but also the opening goes further into the main airstream of the intake manifold to prevent this problem from reoccurring. Now it's time to clean up the gasket surfaces. We're going to go ahead and install a brand new EGR valve and reassemble. Well, we've got the intake manifold off to clean out the passage and install the new sleeve. It's also easier to replace the EGR valve. So we're just going to take our 12 millimeter wrench and go on these nuts here and break each of them loose. You might be able to get a swivel socket on these, but quite often they come off with, with the end wrench and come up relatively straightforward. So once we uh, back these nuts off, we'll be able to lift the valve off as well as get rid of the gasket. We'll install our new EGR valve. Now that we've got the nuts off of these studs, we can remove our old valve, also remove our old gasket here. Now is not a bad time to take some compressed air and we're going to go to the intake manifold side here. We'll take a rag to cover up the ports on the other end here and just gently blow through here to clean any bits of carbon or debris that may be in there. Once that's all cleaned up, we're going to clean up our gasket surface here. We'll take the new gasket that was supplied with the new EGR valve, take our new valve, install it in place, tighten down the two nuts, reinstall our intake manifold, and it might not be a bad idea to clear any memory in the, com in the vehicle's computer and let it sit in the key on engine off position for 30 seconds to a minute. Let it learn the new position of the valve and the vehicle should be good to go. You've now installed your new EGR valve and also clean the passageways to prevent any future contamination.